the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. On your mark, get set, go! Time's running out in Parquet Margarine's great $83,500 Name the Twins contests. Still time left, though, for you to win one of those glamorous Ford Victorias or one of 1,150 other prizes. Tonight will be our last chance to give full contest details on this program, so have paper and pencil ready for our next announcement. Listen, too, for the names of second week's winners at the close of tonight's broadcast. This great contest and tonight's great Gildersleeve program are brought to you by Parquet Margarine. The margarine that tastes so good because it's always fresh. Try it. You'll love it. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine made by Kraft. the twins are growing and getting brighter and cuter every day. And the great Gildersleeve is finding that with the babies around, it's pretty hard to get away from the house in the morning. You better let me take them now, Anki. Well, let me hold the little rascals for a minute. You and Bertie get to have them all day. Uh... Yeah, listen to them. Happy as can be. Right, George, I have a way with babies. Oh, they're laughing. Look, Anki. Yeah, no teeth. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, Marjorie, you and Bronco have to find some names for these babies. Oh, we will, Anki. All our friends are helping us. Well, good. You know, a few minutes with these little tykes really starts the day off fine. Makes a feel, man feel that he loves everybody. Hey, come here! Oh, there's Leroy. You take the babies, my dear. They're ready for bed. In the living room! Hurry up! Yeah, I'm coming. What is it, my boy? There's a ship floating down Mr. Bullard's driveway. A ship? Where? What's this about a ship, Leroy? No kidding. Come to the window. Leroy, there ain't no ships on dry land. Say, there is one, Bertie. Mr. Bullard has a sailboat hitched to his Cadillac. Ain't that something? Where do you suppose he's going? Around the world? No, I doubt it, Leroy. He's probably going to sail it on Grass Lake. You show off. <laughs> What's everybody staring at? Mr. Bullard has a boat, Marjorie. Gosh, he'd hardly speak to us before. Now he'll probably throw rocks at us. <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? You know, I've seen bigger in pictures. Well, I ain't gonna look at it no more. I get seasick. <laughs> He's gonna have trouble backing it into the street. Yeah, he better watch it. He's got it aimed right at my maple tree. I'd better go out and direct traffic. Leroy, stay here behind the curtains. If anybody goes out, I'll go out. Now, Anki, I don't think Mr. Bullard will appreciate your help. Yeah, I'm not trying to help Bullard. I'm trying to protect my tree. But, Anki, things have been so peaceful lately. Yeah, you haven't fought in a week. You know, I'm not going out to fight. Oop, he's getting closer to my maple. If that Bullard's looking for trouble, he's come to the right tree. <laughs> Marjorie's right. There's no use antagonizing Bullard just because he doesn't know how to back out his boat. I'll be just diplomatic and tell him how to do it. Good morning, Mr. Bullard. Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I see you have a boat. Yes. Can I be of any help? No. <laughs> you well, didn't think you could see all the way back to the end of the boat? I'll manage, thank you. Yeah, I'll be glad to give you direction. Thank you, no. You will. I'd be glad to help a neighbor. Gildersleeve, what are you trying to do? Finagle an invitation to ride on my boat this summer? Yeah, I am not. As a matter of fact, the prow of your boat is pointing right at my maple tree. That's the stern. You. <laughs> Stop worrying and move, Gildersleeve. I'm cramping my wheels that way. You, Mr. Burry, you should cramp them the other way. Gildersleeve, do me a favor. Glad to. That's why I came out. No, 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 no. I don't want that kind of help. I'm a grown man with a good car and a license to drive it. Now let me drive it! Oh, yes. Go ahead. Thank you. You a little to the right. You cramped to the left. Easy now. Stop! Gildersleeve, you 
coming close to my mate. I know how to drive. Oh, no. You see? You see? You see? Kill the sleep, stop saying you see, you see. Because <laughs> you backed into my tree. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. Why did you plant the tree so close to the curb? Yofer, look at this, Bullard. You broke off a limb. I did? Where? There. Sticking up through the bottom of your boat. <laughs> you sleeve, you... 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 Nincompoop! Watch it, Bullard. Why didn't you tell me I was about to hit your tree? Why didn't I tell it? He's a hard man to like. <laughs> Good morning, Floyd. All it be, shave, shampoo, haircut. Yeah, I need something. Just add another brush with that snooty Rumson Bullard. What a neighbor. Well, it takes all kinds of people to make a world, as they say. Yeah, you can make a world without that kind. Him and his big cars and his sailboat. Yeah, I'm all through with him, Floyd. This is the end. Sure. Why don't you climb up in the chair and forget it? Well, the shave might relax me. You wait till I hang up my hat. Sure. Get under a hot towel and let little Floydy Munson steam your cares away. Uh, good morning, Munson. Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Oop, Bullard. Give me a shave, Munson. I'm in a hurry. Yelfer, he's got my seat. Floyd! Yeah, Commish? Yeah, I'm first, you know. Well... Uh... Who's first? Oh, is that you back there, Gildersleeve? I thought it was Munson's pot bellied stove. <laughs> <laughs> now, see here, Bullard. Get out of that chair. I will not. If this is your chair, why weren't you in it? Because you beat me to it. <laughs> Bullard, don't laugh up your French cuffs at me. You called me a nincompoop this morning. True. Well, you're a double nincompoop. Gildersleeve, get out of my sight. Yeah, I can't wait to. And if we ever meet again, don't even speak to me. I'll cut you cold. Well, don't you speak to me. I'll cut off your water. <laughs> You and him don't see eye to eye, do you, Mr. Bullard? That, Munson, is the understatement of the year. He started my day off this morning by poking a hole in my boat with his maple tree. No kidding. That was only the beginning of a miserable day. When I got my boat to the lake, I found the property I had to cross was fenced and posted. Well, if you want to cut the fence, I got a pair of hedge clippers at home. Munson, you have to handle these things legally or you get sued. Oh, my lawyer is tracing the owner of the property now. Well, you got Judge Hooker working, huh? Yes, the judge is getting permission to cross. Oh. And I have to have it if I expect to spend the summer on my boat. Good morning, Floyd. Oh, hiya, Judge. Come on in. Is that my client you have in the chair? Judge, did you get the easement? No, Rumson, but I found out who's in charge of the property. Good. We won't have any trouble getting the boat down to the water, will we? None whatsoever. All you have to do to get your boat in the water is to see the water commissioner. <laughs> you mean Gildersleeve? The Summerfield Water Department now owns all the land bordering the lake. And Gildy's the man to see. Aren't we in luck? Luck? Ha! What's the matter, Rumson? Mr. Bullard, maybe you'd like to spend your summer in the mountains. <laughs> Munson, stay out of this. Yes, sir. Rumson, for some reason, you seem to be upset. I am upset. I'm seething. Gildersleeve not only punched a hole in my boat, now he's barring me from the lake. What's this? They ain't on the best of terms, Judge. Oh. Well, he can't do this to me. I won't be outsmarted by a, 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 a water buffalo. Nevertheless, we need his signature. What abominable luck. All winter, I've looked forward to spring when I could sail my boat. But if Gildersleeve thinks I'm going to come crawling to him... Fawning and begging. Uh, uh, I forgot my hat. Hello, Gildy. Hi, Commish. Good morning, Judge. See you later, Floyd. Oh, Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> We're not speaking, Mr. Bullard. Remember? Forgive me, Gildersleeve. I'm a bad-tempered man. You should hate me. He does. <laughs> Uh, Gildersleeve, we've had our little differences from time to time, and it's been my fault. 
I've been a bad neighbor. You should have had me. Bullard, what are you up to? Gildy, it's about... Judge. Come here, you know Bullard's boat, which you knocked a hole in? Yeah, I did not. Of course he didn't. It was all my fault. What's that? I carelessly backed my boat into your maple tree. A stupid thing to do. Well... I'd just like to buy you another tree. A golden spruce. You would? Let's let bygones be bygones, Gildersleeve. You well... Join our hands in friendship. Mend the torn and tattooed fellowship of years gone by. I've always admired you, Gildersleeve. Really? I've said to myself so often, why are you so mean to Mr. Gildersleeve when you love him so? <laughs> oh, that's all right. And now I hope you'll honor me with your friendship. Sure. Thank you. Gildersleeve, old friend, how about having lunch with me tomorrow at my club? Lunch at your club? Say, that'd be fine. Thank you. You've made me very happy. Yeah, I have? You what a wonderful fellow. Drake Gildersleeve will return after this important announcement. Ford Victorias, beautiful new Ford Victorias, waiting for owners. That's right. This is our last chance to tell you how you may win a beautiful new Ford Victoria or one of 1,150 other valuable prizes in Parquet Margarine's $83,500 series of weekly big prize contests. Prizes, just listen to these prizes. Each week for five weeks, Parquet is awarding four beautiful new Ford Victorias, ten General Electric portable dishwashers, 20 General Electric Triple Whip Mixers, 100 crisp new $20 bills, 100 crisp new $10 bills. Here's how you enter. Think of names for Margie and Bronco's twins. One's a boy, one's a girl. Get an entry blank from your grocer. It will tell you how prize-winning entries are judged. Or use plain paper. Send your names for the twins, your own name and address, and your grocer's name and address to Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. With each entry, enclose the red end flap from a package of parquet margarine. And remember, first prize winners whose entries were accompanied by two red end flaps instead of one are entitled to a five hundred dollar bonus in addition to a Ford Victoria. This week's contest ends at midnight this Saturday. The fifth and final contest ends at midnight April 14th. Enter both contests as often as you like. Remember the address, parquet margarine, box 6799, Chicago, 77, Illinois. Why shouldn't you win one of those Ford Victorias? Mail your entry tomorrow. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. His wealthy neighbor, Mr. Bullard, has never been exactly friendly. But since he bought a sailing boat and discovered he couldn't get it on the lake without a permit from the water commissioner, things have changed. Are my shoes shined, Leroy? Yeah, here they are, Aunt. Here, thank you. And here you are, my boy. A quarter? Gosh, thanks. I usually get only 15 cents. Well, Leroy, I doubt if they'd let a man in Bullard's club with a 15 cent shine. <laughs> it's pretty snooty, all right. Why is Mr. Bullard inviting you, Unc? Well, because he likes me, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, he does. He said some very complimentary things about me. Yeah, I know. What is a nincompoop? <laughs> that sort of talk is a thing of the past. Oop, wonder who's at the door. I'll get it! Never mind, Bertie, I'll get it. Good morning, Gildersleeve. Well, good morning, Mr. Bullard. Come in, come in. Thank you. Yeah, I'm delighted to see you, Mr. Bullard. Why don't you call me Rumson? Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> Rumson? Oh, no need for us to be formal when we're such close friends. Yeah, you're right. Rumson, close friend. This is sickening. <laughs> I liked it better when they were fighting. Well, Leroy, you're growing into a more handsome young man every day. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, Leroy, don't you want to go outside for a little while? Yeah, I'll say. I need the air. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Gildersleeve, I haven't seen the twins. Oh, you have a treat in store for you. I think Marjorie has them in the den. Marjorie! 
Company. Come in, Auntie. Mr. Bullard came to see the twins. Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Good morning, Marjorie. I'm afraid I've been remiss as a neighbor. I've been meaning to come over to see the babies for the past two months. Well, they're only six weeks old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Well, are they awake? I, I have presents for them. You have? Isn't that nice, Marjorie? Oh, it's very thoughtful. Here, I'll pull the blanket back so you can see them. Well. Good morning, young people. What are their names? Uh, we haven't decided yet. Yeah. Would you like to hold one, Mr. Bullard? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Perhaps it is, eh? <laughs> oh, I've always liked babies, and they like me. Itchy, 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 too. Little Dot, how would you like to call me Uncle Rumson? <laughs> Baby, watch it. Babies are fascinating, aren't they? I'd better take her, Mr. Bullard. Oh, yes, yes, perhaps you'd better. Oh, I mustn't forget their presents. I bought each of them silver spoons. Oh, that's awfully nice of you, Mr. Bullard. Well, you shouldn't have done it. Well, I think every baby should have a silver spoon. <laughs> Here you are, babies. A spoon for you and one for you. Oh, oh what, what, what did I do? No, that's their way of thanking you, Mr. Bullard. Uh, they're a little fussy. I really should get them to sleep. Well, if they don't like silver, perhaps they'll like gold. Here, would baby like to see Uncle Rumson's wife? You know, I don't think I should get too close to them. They might grab it. Oh, nonsense. nonsense. Oh, be careful. Oh, my goodness. Batted it right against the crib. Naughty, naughty. Sorry, Mr. Bullard. Oh, it's all right. It's still ticking. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes, it's a fine old Hamilton my father gave me. He was a railroad man. You? Conductor? He owned it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, should have known. Well, I must be on my way. Oh, thank you so much for the spoons, Mr. Bullard. Oh, don't mention it. I like doing things for people I like. And Gildersleeve, remember your lunching with me at my club today? Oh, I couldn't forget that. I've asked Sir Jasper Bollock to join us. <coughs> Sir Jasper Bollock? Uh, he's an Englishman who spent most of his life in South Africa. A very distinguished gentleman. And since you're our distinguished water commissioner, I thought you two should know each other. Well, lunching with an Englishman. Right, George, this is wonderful. Rumson, I must do something nice for you someday. Hold that thought, Gildersleeve. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Marjorie. Goodbye. Until luncheon, go to sleep. Right on. Marjorie, where's my hat? Where are you going, Uncle? Down to Peavy's. I want to get some expensive cigars before the luncheon. Though I'm through smoking these cheap cigars. <laughs> What can I do for you? Phoebe, give me some expensive cigars. Something a South African Englishman might smoke. How's that? Yeah, the Corona Coronas ought to do it. Oh, very well. Phoebe, guess with whom I'm having lunch today. Could it be a South African Englishman? Yep, and Mr. Bullard. Uh, Rumson. You don't say. You were lunching at the 100 Club. Very exclusive, Phoebe. And how did you happen to get invited? Well, Rumps and Bullard and I are very close friends, you know. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he had me over looking at his new boat, and he's been lavish with his gifts to the twins. This is still Mr. Bullard you're talking about? Yes, indeed. Phoebe, it's a wonderful thing to discover a deep and enduring friendship like this. How long have you been friendly? All day. Well, the judge was saying quite a change had come over you and Mr. Bullard. Oh, yes, the judge. Yeah, I haven't seen much of the judge since I've been traveling in Rumson's crowd. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, it's none of my business, but has it ever occurred to you that Mr. Bullard might be after something? Peavy, how can you say that? Well, there are people who wouldn't put it past him. Peavy, you're maligning a dear friend of mine. Just because he's taking me to a club at his lunch and keeps telling me I'm a wonderful guy doesn't mean he's after something. 
Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Phoebe, you're a skeptic. Charge the cigars. I should have come to Bullard's Club in my old car. Oh, well. There's the parking place. Between those two limousines. Right in front of the canopy. E no. Better not park here. Dorman's giving me a dirty look. I better go around the corner and park. Gildersleeve. Oh, Gildersleeve. You right? Oh, Bullard. Uh, park the thing right there. It's all right. Is it all right with him, too? The doorman? Of course. Well, just as you say. Uh, Oh, let me help you out, Gildersleeve. Yeah, thank you. You didn't have to wait outside the club for me, Rumson. I wanted to be sure you got in, Gildersleeve. Uh, follow me. Yeah, thank you. Say, a lot of steps. Reminds me of the museum. to order now, Mr. Bullard? Uh, no, thank you, Arthur. We're waiting for Sir Jasper Bollock. I saw Sir Jasper in the billiard room a moment ago. Do you wish me to tell him you've arrived, sir? Uh, will you please, Arthur? With pleasure, sir. A polite waiter. Nice dining room, too. How high is the ceiling, Rumson? Oh, approximately two stories. Ah, there's Sir Jasper at the door. Is that him? Uh, he? Yes, yes. Uh, Gildersleeve, I think you'll enjoy talking to Sir Jasper, but I feel I must tell you he's inclined to ramble a bit. You? Yes. Oh, there you are, Rumson. Yeah. Sir Jasper. Sorry I missed you. I was in the billiard room. We were playing billiards. That's why I missed you. I was playing billiards. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, Sir Jasper Bollop, I want you to meet my very good friend, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. How do you do? How do you do? Charmed. Delighted to meet you, old chap. Charmed, you know. Delighted. Uh... You yeah. <laughs> are. I'm charmed, too. I hear you used to live in South Africa. Oh, yes. Twenty years there before I retired. I missed the hunting. They hunt there, you know, all the time hunting. South Africa hunting. <laughs> Sir Jasper has quite a trophy room, Gildersleeve. He has? Yeah, I have a stuffed bass over my mantle. Really? Well, we have something in common in sportsmen. <laughs> hunting and fishing. Fishing and hunting. Common, you know. <laughs> you, well, I've been wondering what you find to hunt around Summerfield. For the most part, I hunt a cool place to lie down. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Retired, you know. Ha. You're very good, Sir Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying yourself, Gildersleeve? Yes, yeah, yes, indeed. Good, good. This luncheon was planned for you. <laughs> uh, well, shall we study the menu? Yeah, good idea. Very good idea. Start with the gimlet. Let me see. Uh, Gildersleeve, shall we start with our dough? Lobster cocktail, vicious spas. Rest of guinea hen. Oh, why, George Rumson, this is great. You're a fine fellow. And I have no time for people who say you aren't. What's this, Gildersleeve? Take it well, some people have been trying to tell me you invited me here for a reason. Me? Oh, how unkind. I'd like that. Yeah. Jealous. I'll do anything for my friends, and my friends will do anything for me. Right, Sir Jasper? Yes, right, right. Yes, indeed, yes, sir. Oh, what was it you asked me? You, Mr. Bullard was just saying that he didn't invite me here for any selfish reason. Oh, yes, yes. Charming, fresh old, old Bullard here. Good old chap, wizard, wizard. Oh, I know. We're old friends from way back. Who? <laughs> Sir Jasper, Mr. Gildersleeve was saying that he and I are old friends neighbors for years. Oh, yes, friends, friends. I say, Bullard, <laughs> have you told him about that fat old water commissioner chap who lives across the way from you? <laughs> What's this? Mr. Uh, Jasper, shall we order? Vastly we... amusing. Oh, Bullard was telling me this morning, water commissioner or something, Bullard can't launch his boat in Drouth Lake without his fellows from it. Has to bring him... Bring him out to lunch to soften him up. <laughs> oh, no. So that's it. I can't recall the duffer's name. What was it, Brunson, the chap you referred to as an income poop? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sir Jasper Gildersleeve is the water commissioner. He is? Really? Well, <laughs> this is more amusing than I thought. <laughs> 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 Me, uh, wants to make a phone call. South Africa, you know. <laughs> well, Bullard, 
Gildersleeve, I suppose you think I'm a cad. But I had to have your permission to sail my boat. And now you won't give it to me. Oh, yes, I will. You will? I like this club. Would you like to give me a permanent guest card? But uh, and I think I'd like to play golf at your country club on weekend. Gildersleeve, this is an outrage. You can't force me to do this. Then you can't go sailing. Gildersleeve, you're a... <laughs> yeah, I'm a what? A fine fellow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. Arthur, bring on the guinea hen. Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, here are the second week's winners in Parquet Margarine's Name the Twins contest. For entries submitted before midnight, March 24th, brand new Ford Victorias go to... Mrs. Ann J. Frimmer, Upper Montclair, New Jersey. Mrs. George H. McAmaw, Sheffield, Alabama. Michael A. Follis, Chicago, Illinois. A bonus winner. Anona A. Bartlett, Barry, Vermont. Also a bonus winner. Winners of other prizes will be notified by mail. Winners of Ford Victorias in remaining contests will be announced at the close of this program for the next three weeks. Fourth week's contest closes at midnight this Saturday. Fifth and final week's contest ends at midnight April 14th. Entries must include your names for the twins, your own name and address and the red end flap from a package of parquet margarine. Two red end flaps if you want to try for a $500 bonus as well as a first prize. Send entries to Parquet Margarine, Box 6799, Chicago 77, Illinois. Hurry! Your names for the twins may win you a brand new Ford Victoria. the way you put it over on old Buller, Dunk. Well, I just taught him a lesson, my boy. Never try to make a friend to gain a favor. Yeah, I'm going to let him sail his boat. You're not going to bear down on him? No. Buller's all right. He bought us a new tree. He did? Well, I knew he was honest. That's a golden spruce. A golden spruce. Right, George, he kept his word. A real gentleman. Must have taken a big truck to deliver a tree. What do you mean, a truck? The mailman brought it. Hey. <laughs> the mailman? Yeah, it's six inches high. <laughs> Yo. Snookered again. Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gail Gordon, Bill Thompson, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Easton saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a thrifty secret for making economy meals come to life. Next time you serve cold meat, sandwiches, or leftovers, don't forget the mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Every bite tastes better. And the mustard to add is Kraft's prepared mustard. There are two kinds, you know. Kraft salad mustard, mild and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. And remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Hear the Falcon every Sunday over this station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast and listen next Sunday as the Falcon solves the case of the carved ham. Groucho Marx plays You Bet Your Life. Hear him on NBC. NBC.